Hey guys, how's it going today? Hope everyone's having an awesome day and thanks for joining me again on my channel, Recipe for Success. Today we're gonna to be talking about the Facebook Google Australia showdown that happened in the last few weeks. We're gonna be dissecting just exactly what happened if you hadn't heard about it. And we'll be walking through a really interesting interview from the Australian CEO of Atlassian um, with The Verge. So I've actually linked that down below within the description if you guys wanna take a look at it um, and actually read through the transcript. I found it personally really, really interesting, like absolutely fascinating to get an Australian's take on what's going on um, between Google, Facebook, and the Australian government, and specifically not just any Australian, but also the CEO of a very large Australian-based and Australian-grown um, tech company. So if you didn't know, um, Alison is the founding company for products like Jira um, or Confluence, which you probably use if you are in the tech industry on a day-to-day -day basis. And if you aren't in the tech industry, um, those products are essentially like tracking products that allow for development teams to work together. So that's how I've traditionally used Jira. And Confluence can be used sort of like an interweb um, or um, like wiki page for a company as well to share documentation. And it integrates directly with Jira, which is a pretty cool functionality as well. So that's what we're gonna be talking about today. If that interests you, um, if you like this sort of, con of content, go ahead, uh, like, subscribe below, give me a thumbs up, and let's get started. So first, let's talk about the situation. Let's actually digest and try to understand what has been happening between Facebook, Google, and the Australian government. This is certainly not the first tech showdown, if you will, between a large tech company um, or a large tech monopoly, depending on how you think of Google and Facebook and a government entity. Um, obviously, there's been a lot of regulation around privacy with technology, um, but I think this is pretty interesting because uh, of both the country, so Australia being very unique, and I think this is called out in the Verge article, they talk a lot about the demographics of Australia as a um, country and how that's influential to what happened in these discussions and what happened um, in this breakdown, basically. Other thing that's kind of interesting is um, this is specifically, or like the issue that um, the government and Google and Facebook were talking about was specifically related to news and media. So I think this is also very interesting. Um, slightly different from privacy. You know, I would maybe say that when you think about privacy and you think about maybe your personal expectations of the government's role to step in and protect its uh, citizens, that might include doing things like protecting the privacy rights of its citizens. But does it also have an obligation to provide um, consistent free media um, to its citizens? That might be a little bit of a toss up. You might be unsure about, you know, if you think of media as an industry, maybe their role is to ensure that that media industry can flourish. Um, but also you might feel like, no, this is the government overstepping their bounds unnecessarily. So some background information here, guys. It's the final countdown. So basically here's, here's how I understand um, the basically background information of what's going on in Australia. So the Australian government is basically hearing a lot of feedback and chatter from their news outlets and their media industry in general that basically all of their revenue sources have been drying up. So, you know, if you think about traditionally media revenue sources, it might be things like classified ads, ads in the newspaper, um, people buying subscriptions, obviously, to daily or weekly newspapers. And I think it's fair to say that we all appreciate and understand that various media outlets have been struggling. Their advertising dollars certainly have been reduced. And in addition to that, I don't think people are necessarily signing up for um, the same level of subscriptions related to news as they might once have been. Um, in fact, I think there was a really interesting stat somewhere I read that a lot of the newer generations, I think millennials, that's me, and um, you know, Gen Xers are getting, or excuse me, Gen Zers are getting a lot of their news from Twitter and Snapchat, which is, you know, just a really, really strong departure, certainly from the boomer days of old, and your grandparents, who frankly might still be getting a daily um, newspaper subscription. So, 
Australian government's recognizing that they have an industry within their country that is struggling to basically be able to continue to provide jobs, continue to exist in the same capacity, and they value that industry. I think that's part of this as a discussion point. Do you think it's important for the government to support that industry, and do you think the government has a right to do that? But in this case, certainly the Australian government did feel like it was their um, place and their uh, desire to step in and support their media outlets. So what they basically, I think, took a look, looked around and said, Google, Facebook, you guys are making lots of money from advertising dollars. And you're making lots of money from advertising dollars specifically because you provide links to all these news articles. So advertisers are drawn to you because you're basically the intermediary between um, an individual who's going to look for news and the final output where they're actually able to see the news. And so you guys are getting all that money that traditionally might have gone downstream to our news media outlets. And because of that, we want you to share your money. We want you to share the profits with those other media outlets. And basically this is what the Australian government is saying to Google and Facebook, which is you guys are directly benefiting from being able to link out to all these news sources and you guys are getting all this money so we are going to make you give some of your money to the news outlets, some of your advertising dollars. So we're gonna make you give some of that money to these news outlets to make sure that they're able to also stick around. What was the reaction of Google and Facebook to this news? So this is really another twist in this story, which is that Google and Facebook did not say, sure, we're happy to share, sounds great, we completely understand. Instead, they were both very adamant that they did not feel like they needed to go ahead and share their profit, these media outlets. Basically, we're just up in the ante here, right? Everyone's, you know, the government's stepping in and saying, um, we think this is like a reasonable compromise and solution here. The private companies, the private tech companies are coming back and saying, absolutely not. The government's saying, well, we can go ahead and force you because we are the lawmakers. And as a even private entity, of course, you still are required to abide by the law. So we can go ahead and pass a law that's gonna require you to pay these private companies or these media outlets, excuse me. Um, and that's what we're gonna do. And then Facebook and Google came back and said, if you do that, we will leave. Shocking, right? It, it, just the idea of thinking about a country in which Google and Facebook just don't exist. You know, Google is saying we will basically turn off news and not even that we'll turn off news. I think uh, in the Verge article below, which is really fascinating, um, the CEO, Scott, talks a little bit about the fact that Google actually wasn't able to turn off news just for a country. The way that their code was built, they would actually have to turn it off globally. So their threat was not that they would turn off the news. Their threat was that they would basically just completely leave Australia. No one in Australia would be able to use Google. Basically, everyone in the country of Australia would wake up one day and Google would be gone. What would you do? Do you consider Google a like necessary foundation? Would you just start using a different search engine? I don't know, but it's an interesting thought. Facebook also basically threatened that they would go ahead and turn off links as well. So I thought this was interesting. Um, basically that they wouldn't allow anyone to link to a news article if, if they were using Facebook. So you can just sort of see this escalation, right, between these corporate private companies or corporate public companies and the Australian government and really just struggling to try to establish sort of the power dynamic and also um, establish, you know, maybe who here has the uh, ethical high ground, who's right. Um, and you can just see very, very strong opinions on both sides about what needs to happen. One consideration that I thought was really uh, unique that is pointed out in the Verge article, and if you think about technology and you think about maybe um, what would allow for an opportunity for net new technology to enter a space, this is something that's mentioned in the article and I really appreciated this perspective, which is, if Google left Australia while creating a search engine 
is something that another tech company could do. It's not something that Google is the only search engine that exists in the world, or Google is necessarily the only search engine that exists in the world. So basically, one of the things that's pointed out is by Google leaving, inherently they leave a huge market gap in which it would allow for either a net new company, maybe an Australian-based net new company to step in and say, hey, we're gonna go ahead and take this market share. We're happy to work within the regulatory guidelines provided by the government and therefore actually potentially create more jobs in Australia. So that actually might end up being like a win-win in terms of both the government getting what they want in order to be able to um, support their media industry and also actually create net new Australian technology jobs. And to some extent, we actually saw this happen. So one of the things that's mentioned is when Google said that they were going to leave the country, Microsoft actually stepped in and said, hey, we're super happy to go ahead and step in if Google leaves, we'll be your search engine and we'll go ahead and work within any regulatory parameters that you provide, no problem. So here we have, you know, basically the sharks on the outside swimming around this scenario saying, Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen and you know just preparing themselves to move in quickly and that's not wrong right I think it's great that you have some variety here and some choice where basically an unexpected outcome of these discussions was that there potentially was going to be more diversity within um, the technology space to go ahead and grow and fill this market share. But of course, it didn't end there. So once Microsoft basically stepped up to the table and said, hey, we're willing to um, step into this gap, Google then quickly <laughs> apparently changed their mind and said, no, no, we're here for it. We're going to go ahead and figure out how to work with you and negotiate on this. So how did it all end? Here's how I understand, based on the article um, and everything going on, here's how I understood this sort of um, all came to a close, which essentially is the government did pass a law that basically says they can name any specific company that's required to negotiate with these smaller companies. So that's the law they passed. The interesting thing is they didn't actually name any company, so like Google and Facebook aren't named, but passing the law incentivized both Google and Facebook to then on their own negotiate with these media outlets. So they did end up negotiating and I think coming to various agreements with the Australian media outlets to pay them for the privilege of being able to link to their content, frankly. So that's the total in summation outcome as I understand it. It's a compromise, right? I think that's the interesting thing. Ultimately, there's sort of a compromise here where the government basically is saying to technology, we have a leash, we're willing to use it, so therefore you have to do some of these things that we say, and the technology side of the house is saying, we'll do it, but you can't force us, right? It's sort of like, ah, we'll do it on our own. No need for you to get involved and sort of dirty your hands with regulation. We'll just go and do it on our own. So oh, a, a few thoughts on this. That basically is the story of like what happened. Um, if there are any particular salacious details that other folks who maybe have been following along with this want to uh, comment or share, go ahead and add them down below. But that at a high level is how I understand this scenario. Um, I think there are a few things here that make this really interesting. So first and foremost is like, why should you care? Obviously, I'm based out of the United States. Um, this is traditionally the home of you know Google and Facebook but beyond that like why should I care so I think it's important to um, of course with globalization across the world uh, really appreciate and understand what's going on in the technology space globally certainly I think and I think this is what is mentioned in the Verge article is that this is potentially the start of a trend that we might see in terms of how governments are going to react around um, supporting, in this case specifically, the media industry, but I wonder if you could also almost suggest that this might also be a, a precedent that's set for how a government could react to any other industry if there's a large shift in the marketplace towards digital or towards technology interrupting that space. And this is where I think it starts to get, frankly, from my own opinion, a little bit dicey. The other element that's mentioned in the interview below is one of why Australia basically was this hotbed of um, government regulation and test in this way. And I question a little bit just because this ended up being a good fit for Australia in terms of how they chose to question um, and regulate 
uh, the tech industry. I don't know that that inherently is going to be the same outcome that we see for some com for countries like the United States. And here's why. So I think um, Scott does a really good job in the article below mentioning some key demographics about the country of Australia. So it's 25 million people. They have a parliamentary legislation legislator. So basically they don't have an executive branch. And he talks a little bit about the fact that that enables them to then make um, laws pass and enact those laws very, very quickly. And he sort of says that's why they're the first to do it. And we'll probably therefore could see um, similar sorts of regulation coming out of other progressive areas of the world like Europe and potentially United States. However, I did want to point out there are a lot of differences, right? There's a lot of differences in our government style and also the population as well and how we think of the free market that I don't necessarily think it's clear cut that just because this happened in Australia, we're going to see the same thing happen in the United States. And for the last part of the interview, I think they talk a lot about how to prevent similar situations from happening in the future, right? We don't want a situation in which our technology companies are feeling consistently threatened and are coming up at a head against the government um, in, in any country, I think, really. And, and I think that's important because I think that's true. Like we ideally want to um, be able to leverage technology in a way that's really positive for everyone, acknowledging that technology has brought a lot of tremendous innovation and advancement to how we exist today and will probably continue to do so, right? It definitely seems like it's the way of the future. And we need, therefore, a way for our government um, to act and interact in harmony and balance with those tech companies. Today in the United States, um, if you look at Congress, most of the Congress people are quite old. <laughs> they did not grow up with the same probably um, natural innate comfort around technology that those of us who are a bit younger have. And so I, I appreciate that it might be more challenging for them to actually understand how the technology functions, if what they're asking for can be done, or why what they're asking for might not actually have the impact that they're looking for. But I think this is something that naturally, as we evolve and continue down the road, more and more people who hopefully will start getting elected to Congress, um, or just more and more of our elected officials will be more familiar with technology and more comfortable with it. So they'll feel less of a threat around um, either not understanding how the technology works or um, this is the way we used to do it and we have to keep to that as opposed to being more open to the idea of things shifting. Government and these tech companies should be collaborating more frequently, often and early. And I think that's a great suggestion here, which is we don't want to stop the innovation that's happening, but we do want to make sure that, you know, all sides of the house, everyone's really thinking about the impact to the consumer, the impact to the citizen. So there you have it, guys. We talked through what was going down, down under with Facebook and Google. I hope you appreciated uh, me talking through this. I hope if you had seen some headlines but hadn't really dug into it too much, hopefully this clarified what was going on. Um, I hope you do also take a chance to look at that Verge uh, interview, really fascinating stuff. I really enjoyed reading through it. And I hope overall that this was just interesting content for you. If you have a reaction or you um, wanted to add your own spin on what you think the government should have done or what you think Google and Facebook should have done, go ahead, comment below, and we'll talk to you next time.